Imagine this. You are a plankton. You've been resting peacefully deep beneath the Earth's crust for millions of years. Your plankton body has now transformed into petroleum. Suddenly, you hear a horrendous noise and you are sucked up a tube. You're taken through a pipeline and you make your way onto an ocean liner. You now travel the sea and you're taken to a petroleum refinery in India where an enormous amount of energy and electricity is used to combine your ethylene body into a polycarbon chain, and now you're called plastic. You continue through a complex supply chain of manufacturers, distributors, and eventually you make your way onto a store shelf. A consumer comes by and picks you up, uses you for approximately 10 seconds, before discarding you onto the street. From plankton to plastic, it took millions of years, yet only seconds for you to be tossed away in a thoughtless moment. Now, I'd like to invite you to step out of your plankton body and step into the reality of an informal waste picker named Nasima. You are now in one of India's largest slums. It is hot. You can feel the sun on your face. As you take a deep breath in, you can smell the familiar scent of plastic burning in the background. As you draw the attention to your body, you realize you are exhausted. You've walked almost five kilometers today, carrying a 30 kilo sack on your back. You've had to bend over almost 2,000 times, picking up discarded plastics, which would have otherwise ended up in the environment, contaminating the rivers, and ultimately making its way to the lowest place, which is far too often the ocean. And despite all of this hard work, as you make your way to the scrap shop to sell this plastic, you don't know how much you're going to get paid because the price is constantly going up and down. You don't know when you're going to get paid because the scrap shop owner is waiting for the end buyer in the supply chain to settle, and he doesn't have the cash to pay you. Your family is relying on you to put food on the table today. And because you don't have any savings, and you haven't had the luxury of a formal education, your only other option to keep your family from going hungry is to find some other form of physical labor. From the slum, you look up and you can see a skyscraper. In this skyscraper, there's a procurement manager named Vashali. She works for one of India's large consumer goods companies. When she started her job, she was determined to use 100% recycled plastic on all of the product lines she is in charge of. But when she went to source plastic from the market, she couldn't find the right quality. Finally, she was able to get the right quality but when she ran the manufacturing process, the consistency was not there. And this resulted in a huge batch of defects being made. Now her boss is saying, if this happens again, she's fired. Deflated and on her way home, she passes the body shop outlet. She finds information about 100% recycled plastic. And she's able to read about plastics for change. She schedules a meeting to solve her plastic problems. At Plastics for Change, we've developed a marketplace platform that makes it easy for brands and manufacturers to source that consistent supply of high quality recycled plastic from responsible supply chains. Working with Vishali, we designed a supply chain to meet her recycling goals, but also to create better livelihoods at each stage of her supply chain. We stabilized the price of the plastic that she uses in her manufacturing process. So now she has predictable packaging costs. But furthermore, Nasima, when she's selling the plastic to the scrap shop, she doesn't have to worry about the price going up and down. And the scrap shop owner is able to issue buy-sell transactions on our mobile app and is ensured to get paid on time and in full. By building this transparency through the supply chain, it also allows us to make sure the right quality control processes 
have been implemented. And by designing these shared value chains, it also means we're creating better and more predictable livelihoods while also connecting some of the most marginalized members of society with access to healthcare, education, and financial literacy opportunities. So after many years of hard work, we're proud to announce that Plastics for Change has become the first recycler certified from the World Fair Trade Organization. But there is still a lot of work to be done. Today, there are still billions of people living without access to waste management services, and also billions of people living in abject poverty. We can use plastic waste as a means to create better livelihood opportunities while also tackling climate change. In many cities throughout Asia, we've experienced rapid urbanization. And at the same time, the consumption rates of plastic have also been growing drastically. The infrastructure needed to process all of this plastic waste has not kept pace. In fact, the Pollution Control Board estimates that 40% of the waste just does not get collected at all. Informal waste workers like Nasima play a critical role in society, preventing this plastic from ending up in the environment and ultimately in our food chains. Today, microplastics are in the water we drink, it's in the air we breathe, and it's in the food we eat. Most importantly, it's in our own bloodstreams. It doesn't take long for plastic burning on the streets here in Asia to reach the nostrils and eventually the body of somebody living on the other side of the world. Now, it is absolutely ludicrous that we are extracting so much fossil fuel-based plastic from the Earth's crust. Unless today's business leaders take dramatic action to transition towards the circular economy, there's due to be more plastic in the ocean than fish. And it's not just about the plastic pollution, it's also about the climate. According to The Guardian, by 2050, plastic will be responsible for 13% of the carbon budget. That's the equivalent of 615 coal-fired power plants running at full capacity. Every Friday now, millions of people are striking for climate action. Just this September, there's the largest mobilization in human history. Now, more than ever, consumers are demanding that companies increase their commitments towards responsible business practices and embrace the circular economy. And companies world over are listening. So my request for you is, the next time you purchase something made from plastic, ask yourself, are you supporting the shareholders of the fossil fuel industry? Or are you helping to support responsible supply chains that benefit some of the poorest people in society, like Nasima? Thank you so much.